um, I think what I said I would first describe is the uncertainty principle. And uh, I have some figures here, which is meant to kind of illustrate that. But um, these fixed figures can be a little bit um, not very proficient at what we mean by un uncertainty. So let me use one of these simulations from FETAT Colorado EDU to illustrate that. I think the one that I want to use is this one, quantum wave interference. Um, this can both be used to illustrate the, what we mean by uncertainty. For example, uncertainty in position. Uh, that's probably the easiest thing to describe. So let me start out with that. And, um, and I think we might be able to even get to interference. All right, so this is the simulation. Um, do I want high intensity? Well, um, well, we can do high intensity, but I don't think that has really a context for us to think about. Um, you could think about this as like a beam of light. Am I doing light? Um, well, yeah. So um, all these particles here have both wave and uh, particle nature. That's uh, uh, that's uh, that would be what we mean by the wave particle duality. So, so I think uh, um, uh, let me just stick to photons, which are particles of light. We have already talked about light as wave, and now what we are saying is that this light has particle nature. And I, I think it's easiest to describe the particle nature in single particle mode. So let me get to that single particle mode. So, um, all right. So um, this is uh, what you have to imagine. <laughs> um, this is my source of the uh, the light particle. It's a light source, and I guess what you have to imagine is that it's a source whose intensity I can control so well. More, most specifically, I can send such a low amount of light that when I send some light, I have some assurance that only a minimum possible amount of light is being sent. You might say a single photon of light is being sent. And the, on the flip side, what I would have to say at the top here on the screen side, I would uh, have to say I have uh, detectors that are so efficient, so proficient at detecting light that if a single particle hits this uh, detector here, I would detect that single particle. If the single particle hits uh, um, detector here, I would detect a single particle. And there are actual, this is not entirely theoretical. There are actual real life experimental devices called photo multiplier tubes, which can actually be used to detect a single photons. Now, um, they can detect that, let me not, yeah. Uh, let me not muddy the water with that. They can detect a single photons. Let's leave them there. <laughs> um, and I guess from my experience with the high intensity, what I might expect is that as the light hits, if this is my beam width, then the light could be anywhere there. Hmm. I guess if I maybe reduce the intensity, I can, I might see a bit of a kind of dimmer thing, so it's not all saturated, but you can see the width of the beam spot and the light uh, may fall anywhere here. So let's look at with a single particle what happens. So I fire a single particle, uh, ignore that. Huh. So on this entire screen, I don't have a distribution of light. When I look at this detector that's able to detect a single particle, it says it detected a single photon and it detected it here at this very arbitrarily small location. So, all right, you feel like, and that's not even at the center. You feel that's weird. Okay, let's just fire a few more photons. Um, thought I could do this faster. Okay, rapid. 
Okay, so that looks maybe a little bit better. My photon is over there, um, but it's still at a single point. It's not spread out. So uh, now you, what you can do is you can um, fire, it, fire it repeatedly. And each time you fire a photon, each time you detect it, you will see it detected as a single particle. And that's what this figure was illustrating. The figure here was illustrating when you have only 40, okay, here it's electron. When you have 40 electrons, those particles are detected like this. So when am I going to see a picture that resembles this better, where I have a spread out distribution of intensity um, and it kind of looks like a light from light wave. Turns out if you fire this enough, so you have an enough number of photons on that other side to basically build up significant enough statistics. That's when you begin to see a pattern that resembles what you see in high intensity version of the simulation. You see that most of the particles are clustered around the center. There are, are a few odd ones that are kind of outside of the center but for the most part, they are in the center. So, so yeah, that's, uh, um, so that's what we refer to, um, uh, that's, what, that's what we refer to position uncertainty. It's uncertainty in this very specific sense. When I fire this photon, it can be kind of anywhere in the screen. Now, I don't mean it can be literally anywhere, as in all the points have equal probability of receiving a photon. What you really have is a narrow range has a greater probability. And outside of range, you have a smaller probability. And um, within that constriction, when you find a photon within this smaller range, uh, they always show up as a single particle but their position uncertainty before I detected it was about width of the beam that you would see with the high intensity beam. That's the uncertainty of position because each time you fire, the position could change. It doesn't have to be there, now it's here. But what you will see is that as you fire this multiple times now, you do have far outliers that happens, nothing's wrong with that. But if you have collected enough data, if you have a statistically significant number of um, uh, number of photons being detected, then those photons are mostly around in the um, around in the central what we call central maximum. And uh, you might just leave it that at okay, uh, that's odd, but I think that kind of makes sense. If it's particles coming out of this beam then you know, as they are coming out, you might be striking something else, angle, angle could shift a little bit. So it makes sense that most of the particles fall within this range and uh, all right, uh, everything explained, let's move on. Um, the thing that stops us from doing that is the interference effect. So it's a, a kind of an interference effect that we didn't talk about uh, when we did the uh, waves but it's something you can see here. Uh, I'm doing what's called a double slit uh, interference. So you have this light wave coming in through one slit, coming in through uh, the other slit, and you see a bit of an odd pattern on this other side here. And this is what it's showing. You see this line of points where you have no light or very little light. That's where you are um, seeing what we call destructive interference. You have seen examples of destructive interference with the nodes of standing wave. And it's also similar here, although I guess you can't quite describe this standing. So, um, so this is a destructive interference. That's a phenomenon that's uh, distinctly unique to waves because it requires a superposition principle. I mean, imagine this. Imagine you had an electron and you add another electron to it. 
would you expect to get zero electron? That makes no sense at all. And you know, if that were to actually happen, that is inconsistent with the conservation of energy. So we're not gonna go there. But when you have two waves, two waves, those two waves can be set up in a way that they destructively interfere. When one goes up, the other goes down. And that's what this uh, black band is describing. It's showing the positions where the screen can be placed, where, um, where those light waves from one slit and the other slit destructively interfere. So there's one here, there's one here. There ought to be one there and there, but uh, uh, yeah. And, um, and this is what you could, might see literally in an experiment to working with the lasers and double solid. We do this lab in physics 4C, it's a lot of fun. Now, when we repeat this experiment with the single particles, what do we expect to see? That is the question. This is what you see. Uh, so you remember this picture, high intensity interference pattern. When you fire single particles, it will look like nothing is happening or nothing different happen is happening because you see a particle there, it was kind of within the range of the medium and, and, and you know, and, and all right, it's that, um, so it looks like the barrier didn't do anything. But continue firing because what you learned earlier is what you see with a single measurement may not accurately represent the physical picture. When you continue to fire it and you build up the number of, um, uh, when you build up a statistically significant sample size, I want to um, point out what you will see. Uh, I want one, two, three, four, five. okay. I think maybe I can do this 20-ish more times and the pattern I'm looking for will become visible. Do you see a pattern yet? Yes, no, maybe. Um, I think that's good enough. Um, you might be beginning to see the pattern. So what I want you to realize that each time a photon falls, you can't really predict it where it'll land. It might land within this range. It might land within this range or this range. But um, but I, I don't know where it's like with the next one I'm gonna fire. Let's see, it landed here, but I had no idea it was gonna land here there. It could have landed in the middle, it could have landed on the left. With the next one I fire, I landed in the middle. So this is what I mean uncertainty. Uh, when you measure the position here, there is uh, there is uncertainty, but within that uncertainty, look for a pattern here. Do you see anything unusual, possibly interesting here? I hope you are beginning to notice these dark bands where no photons or very little photons appear, um, appear to be landing. And when you kind of switch back and forth within high intensity, and single particles, I hope you see a correspondence. Uh, where you have um, dark high intensity, which means the phase of the two electromagnetic the oscillations are just the right amount to cancel each other at that spatial point. And with the exact same setup, exact same everything, in the single um, particle, you are seeing this same exact feature open up again. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, kind, and that's uh, our evidence for the still remaining wave nature of photon. So, in the earlier discussions, uh, we had the people choose, you know, is light photon or is light a particle photon or a wave? The insistence would have been it couldn't possibly be both; it's one or the other. And what we are learning in quantum mechanics is that the, that one and the same particle, photon, can have both wavelength and uh, momentum. So this is what we mean by uncertainty. So uncertainty in position. And um, here the uncertainty momentum is a little bit harder to see. It basically has to the component of momentum that's going in a direction parallel to the screen, but 
uh, let me leave that there. So, all right, so I hope this uh, helps you think through the idea of uncertainty. 